this guy on this play and remind this guy of that. And that's where I think he's trying to convey that. So, uh, but yeah, I don't think blocking it out is the right phrase. Blocking it out to me is scary. When I hear a guy that's too blocked out, I think of like Carson Wentz in Philadelphia a few years ago. Remember we had that conversation? He was clueless. He didn't even know like Doc Rivers was signed by the 76ers. So it's like, well, you're, you're, you're too blocked out, Carson Wentz. You got to be, you know, in the fabric of the city a little bit and know what's going on. And that's where I think Brady has found the, the fine line or the right approach there. And, and I think that the sweet spot would go something like this. You seek that out for motivation during the mundane aspects exactly. of the week. Right. The right. workouts, the meetings, right. the film study, sure. the extra time with your iPad or your tablet, studying the game plan, all the stuff that that isn't playing the game, that doesn't naturally have the adrenaline. So you use the criticism then to get you locked in and focused and do everything you're supposed to do. Stay properly hydrated, get enough sleep, do all that. Got to do all the things I need to do. I'm pissed off, I'm going to do all the things I need to do. And then you set it aside Friday or Saturday and you focus on the task at hand. I think that's a way to get the best I, of both I, that's worlds. That's what I think. Where right, right. You, let it, you let it stoke your fire right. and then you set it aside so it doesn't make you so emotional and so obsessed that it becomes a problem. Now, we say that, but what happened during that game against the Steelers in 2007? He got in Anthony Smith's face. He didn't yeah. forget about it yeah. once, the game, once the game was in hand. By the way, I don't know why I stopped you from doing the double barrel middle fingers. We have been. I know. We ha if you haven't noticed, this is in rumper room, <laughs> folks. And, and I was on with Dan Patrick yesterday because he's on after us here on Peacock. Yeah. But his radio show is also on 275 plus over the air station. So he's FCC regulated. He can't get away with that. And we were joking about it. And I said, you know, we're letting these things fly. And nobody's saying anything to us, so we're just going to keep doing it. And he said that when he used to do Sports Center with Keith Overman, they would let a few fly from time to time just to see if the bosses were paying attention. And they ultimately came to the conclusion that the bosses weren't watching, so they'd say whatever the hell they wanted to say. <laughs> so I, I, I can remember and them, being, you know, dancing that fine line those two a little bit. I do. That, I mean, that was the two best Sports Center anchors ever. So that was amazing. But yeah, sorry, I didn't keep going. No, no, but this yeah. is the point. I mean, yeah. I don't want to stop you from doing a double barrel middle finger. I mean, let's, 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 I guess we test this until we get, I, ex I kind of expect, we dropped three S bombs yesterday. I kind of expected to hear something. I know. What's the over under? I know. Before we, we, you know, do we just have to come out and go S bomb over and over and over again? Is that when we're going to, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. know. I, feel, I, I don't like, like my podcast, I let them fly Kristen. everywhere, and poor Kristen, who's in the back room right now, has to, you know, manage it a little bit when we, yeah. you know, post it or whatever. Uh, she's probably talking to us right now, like, would these two shut up and stop, don't swear, because we probably make her life a little bit more complicated. There are many streaming platforms out there, including Peacock, all of which you will find contain profanity and, and other things that require parental warning. Tom Brady will be the subject of an event that undoubtedly will include some salty language he is both the executive producer and the first subject of what they are calling the greatest roasts of all time, or wrote. Okay, um, look, I, I don't, and maybe, maybe it would be the funniest thing we've ever seen. You know, if you do a roast the right way, it is funny. I, I don't know who's gonna be involved in the roast of Tom Brady. That's gonna go a long way toward determining how funny it is or isn't, what kind of material they are fed yeah. or what they come up with. That will go a long way toward determining what is or isn't funny. Please don't let Rob Gronkowski anywhere near the microphone. He did a roast of David Ortiz several years ago that they were gonna put on NESN in the Boston area and they couldn't use it because in part of the stuff he said, cancelable stuff from Gronk six years ago, five years ago. So a part of me really wants Gronk involved, and part of me says, God, no, please don't give Gronk a microphone. But that's coming after the season. They're going to tape it after the season. There's going to be a roast of Tom Brady, and it's the first of, I don't know who they're going to move to next, but they're starting with Tom Brady, and he's an executive producer, which means anytime you see executive producer for something like that, yeah. that, means more, that means more big money for Tom. 
Yeah, as he tries to build up enough to go buy a team. They can be funny. Like, what are the old roasts, like, back in the day, right? Like, in the 70s, where they used to, like, roast people. Dean Martin. Yes. I Dean mean, Martin. I, listen, when they're on, you know, Direct TV, what is it, Channel 203 every now and then, they're trying to get you to buy the Time Life roast of Dean Martins and all those. It is funny. I, it is. I still sit there and watch it. I love that Brady is, like, Kind of, you know, out there a lot more than he used to be. There's no question. You know, it is cool. I will say this, though. Let me just ask you this. Because this is, I feel like we're going a little bit into a rare territory with one of the, you know, four biggest stars in the in sports in the history of our country, right? I mean, I, I think I'm, it's official to put Brady in that, that category of Muhammad Ali, Babe Ruth, Michael Jordan. As, as the top four in, in the sports as far as this uh, high, pra high praise from a guy who hates Tom Brady. I know, right, right. Yes, I hate him. I know, I get it. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but, so but, but what I also would say is I feel like this is the first time where one of these type of guys, maybe, maybe, all right, and we're not there yet, but I do feel like we're going there, and I've heard you make some comments a little bit here and there too, and I've heard a lot of other people, and that's why I'm saying it, like, I would worry about oversaturation just a little bit. I really would. I, I it, it, Because Michael Jordan was the man, and then we didn't really, when it, he got away, you, oh, there was a Nike commercial he's on, or a Coke commercial, well, well, that was it. But everywhere you look, people are buying those Jordan shoes. That's something Brady's never going to have. That's never going to get. He's never going to have an iconic brand no. attached to anything. He's trying. He got started way too late. Yes. He's trying with his clothing line, but it's too late. It's never going to be what the Jordan brand has become. No. But... He's been, I, I, but, I like Jordan was the past kid. himself and in the, the public right, eye, right. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. No, no, yeah. Yeah, but he still, he still shows up in commercials. Yes. You still see him. But he's not but he's doing not his own everywhere. Netflix roasts, and he's right. not putting Instagram videos out all the time, and doing things that are driven by him to put him out there. That's where I just I find agree. it different, and I'm not, I'm not, I know people are going to go, oh, he's being a, hey, Brady, sure, great, but. Now he's also, like we talked about last week, going to be on our TV 23 weeks a year, too. And just, you know, it'll be interesting. To